Good evening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to Hilal Live. I'd like to thank you, the viewer, for staying with us. And of course, my colleague Lukman Shadrach for taking you through that first one hour of the show. Now, the Islamic Medical Association says it has a feeling that the religion of Islam is under attack by the health department's proposed dress code policy for nurses. In July, provisional heads of the departments received communique from the health department's director general that outlined some of the changes to nurses' uniforms countrywide. One of those changes is the ban on headscarves for nurses while on duty. Joining us now from the Islamic Medical Association is their nursing director, Hanifa Ali. Uh, Sister Hanifa, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah so much for joining us. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for having me. And also, assalamu alaikum to your viewers and listeners. No, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Hanifa, let's talk about, obviously, these, these changes. Um, before it, the proposals and that were made, were you as the Islamic Medical Association aware of others, and were you communicated about it? No, not at all, actually. Uh, you know, we had a similar uh, occurrence uh, a little while ago, at uh, uh, one of the Midland, one or two of the Midlands hospitals in KZN, and I went over to the Department of Health, Health, and uh, discussed these issues. And uh, the the whole idea was quashed, and then we. Uh, the nurses were allowed to wear their scarves all over again. So, uh, you know, that was about six, seven years ago. However, this uh, communique came over to us. Well, it went to everybody. And as you know, the nurses were very, very up in arms. And knowing me, because I have been serving on the Nursing Association and Nursing Council, and Denosa, uh, they brought this to my attention. And we then discussed it with our president. And uh, he then sent them a letter and uh, uh, to query the whole thing. And also to let them know that there's no empirical evidence that the scarf will contribute to um, infection, cross-infection in hospitals. And uh, this is where we are at the moment. But uh, surprisingly, yesterday, I got a little bit of communique to say that this is only a draft, yet the memorandum and the annexure did not say it was a draft. It said this will be operational from January, January 2024. We then, uh, you know, we had to really get on and uh, make our mark and uh, get our uh, ducks in a row because uh, the parents and families were up in arms and we already have such a shortfall in nursing practitioners with them going off overseas. And uh, besides all of that, it is really eroding our basic human rights as, as, as seen in the Bill of Rights, uh, section 15, where we would be allowed to practice different religions and all of those would be respected and uh, uh, this now has uh, really, really caused us there. Sister Anifa, we speak about the Bill of Rights and of course our constitution, despite all the challenges the country has, is a constitution which is for all of us as South Africans. When uh, you do mention that it is a draft as we stand at this very moment and nothing I, I is final. Know. Uh, sorry, Anifa. No, no. Huh? I, I just would like to correct mm. that. It did not come to us mm. as a draft memorandum with the annexure. It just came as a draft which would be put into practice 
on the 20, uh, on in, uh, in January 2024. Okay, so you, so you say, so you saying that it came, it, it's, is this uh, set in stone? It's going to happen from January 2024, that's what you're saying? Well, that's what they initially told us. Right. We now have had several interviews discussing the whole issue with various uh, uh, telephone, uh, various uh, media houses, and uh, even today it was uh, on uh, TV. Uh, I just would like to state that everything has now changed. And it, they sent us a note, Mr. Mahala, the spokesperson for the Department of Health, says it is not really the final paper. It is a draft. And they have, will be looking at it, and they will review it according to uh, comments received. And once the new, um, uh, uh, should I say, memo is ready, they will then uh, send it to everybody. Okay, so you are going to be receiving that memo once it's completed, am I right? Well, we, we hope so, yes, because mm. we are the major uh, people who are uh, taking the government to task regarding this issue. Have you had conversations with, with the health department, especially that of uh, Minister Joe Butler, uh, regarding this? Because at the end of it, the health department, he is the head of it as the minister. Well, we have not. We have sent them letters but not face-to-face -face communication. You know, because we've tried on many occasions and we have not been able to get through to them. They're either out of town or they are busy at meetings. So we had to get it in, uh, done in writing. Sister Anifa, when looking at the history of Muslim nurses, I mean, it's quite a long history of Muslim nurses. It's not from now. I mean, it stretches from even the apartheid days when they were in hospitals, which really were not catered for, uh, you know, uh, people of color. So, I mean, do you feel that that history and, of course, the contribution of uh, Muslim nurses would at least play some sort of a part in allowing uh, the wearing of headscarves in hospitals? Well, I tell you what. Uh, we are definitely not letting this go. We will be fighting it to the end. We will, uh, uh, during the apartheid days, I w became a professional nurse in 1972. And uh, you can now guess my age. And uh, I am nursing since then. And we were even allowed to wear... Um, pantsuits, uh, and not very many of us had, you know, pushed for the headgear, but we were allowed in at different places. And it became a norm that nurses wear the headgear, okay? Uh, and we've been wearing those uh, from then, you know, from the apartheid times. And when we voted for our government and it became a democratic government, they are still holding on to some uh, issues from the past. And I cannot explain that. Sister Anifa, I'm sure you wouldn't want this to reach the courts. You, you would want there to be, when that memo does come, the memo would state, inshallah, that look, uh, we as the, 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 the government have, uh, the health department have decided that we would allow uh, Muslim nurses to wear their headgear. But let's flip the coin and say it doesn't go in favor of the Muslim nurses. Uh, I don't want to preempt anything, but would there be a case that you'd want to, as the Islamic Medical Association and which other, which other stakeholders may want to take this to the courts? Absolutely, absolutely. But 
it seems uh, favorable at the moment. I have uh, a few friends in the Department of Health uh, because I was a freedom fighter. And, uh, you know, I do know people. And uh, a few of them got back to me and said, hey, I think you have really, really turned the hornet's nest. But uh, I think they are giving this due hearing. I said, well, let's see the hearing and let's see what goes on because we are not just stopping here. And our president, uh, Dr. Musa, has also said that we will go to, through the judicial processes and uh, et cetera. You know, we had a similar case, if you know, with uh, a lady from the defense force, yes, yes. Mrs. Isaacs, I think, mm -hmm. in 2021, where she was not allowed the scarf. And eventually it was said she can wear the scarf and over that she puts on her beret. So that was a president that was set, uh, you know, a president that was set for us. And, you know, we have been wearing the scarf all these years and suddenly now we are, uh, it's been taken away. Yeah, the Miss Isaac story, of course, was the one, and Alhamdulillah, she ended up winning uh, that part of the uh, of the case and, of course, was allowed to wear the headscarf. Sister Anifa, that's all the time we have for you. We'd like to say Jazakallah so much for joining us and all the best. And inshallah, hopefully, uh, the, the outcome will be in the favor of the Islamic uh, Medical Association and all of the other Muslim nurses. I would like to please uh, conclude by saying, please pray for us. Pray for us as much as you can, because we cannot let this, uh, uh, this right, our identity be taken away from us. So I ask your uh, viewers to please help us with that. Inshallah, uh, maybe we make uh, to other last one to Allah grant you as the IMA and the Muslim nurses victory in this uh, particular case that is happening. Sister Nifa, again, Jazakallah jo for joining us. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Jazakallah to you. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. That's Hanifa Ali. Uh, she is the nursing director at the Islamic Medical Association. We will, of course, be keeping uh, in tune with that story. And hopefully we'll have them back when, of course, there is a uh, resolution to that at the moment. After the break, I speak to Molana Abdul Khalik Ali. Uh, he was part of an interfaith group uh, that is discussing uh, so much that is happening in the country, the concerns that the country is having right now. And we'll be chatting to him with regards to it from an MJC perspective. And now, of course, they gave their views with the other religions within South Africa. Do stay tuned.